If you're new to the IELTS exam and feeling a little lost, you've come to the right place. My name is Asia, and I've taken this test multiple times and helped thousands of students pass theirs. Even though I've been living in London for over 10 years, originally I'm from Kazakhstan, and as a non-native speaker, I understand the struggles you are facing, so I'm excited to share everything I've learned so you could prepare for your test quickly and achieve a higher score. Okay, let's get started! How can you start your preparation? First of all, take a full practice test to learn what you're facing in each of the four sections – listening, reading, writing, and speaking. You can find free tests on the IDP and British Council websites. For the best tests that are exactly like the real exams, I suggest buying one of the recent Cambridge practice test books, number 16 or 17. New number 18 books are to be published in July. You can find the links to all the tests and other resources I'll be talking about in this video in my free IELTS study plan linked in the video description. For listening and reading, you can check your answers and find out what scores you'd get. For band 7, you need at least 30 correct answers in listening and reading academic. For general training students, you need at least 34 correct answers in reading. Your listening and reading scores can give you a good indication of your current level of English skills. If your first practice scores are below the required level, it doesn't yet mean that you don't know English well enough. In both sections, you're presented with a lot of information and not much time, so it's easy to make mistakes on your first test. You can learn the strategies for each section that will help you perform better, and this preparation may be sufficient for you to pass your test. If your listening and reading results were high enough, you can spend less time on these two sections. However, please don't cut your writing and speaking preparation time. The scores in these two sections tend to be lower than those in listening and reading. There are a fair number of candidates who can score band 8 or even 9 in listening and reading, but fail to achieve band 7 in writing or speaking. On the other hand, there are those who manage to score band 7 in each section. These tend to be candidates who are not yet fluent in English, but who were well prepared. What I want to say is, Everyone should prepare thoroughly for the IELTS writing and speaking sections. So why is IELTS writing so tricky? And what are the reasons so many people fail to achieve the score they need in this particular section? Well, the way IELTS writing is assessed may not be what you expect. IELTS writing is not just about your English skills. It's also about your writing skills. Yes, you heard me right. IELTS examiners assess your writing skills. They check if you can fully answer the essay question, if you choose relevant ideas and develop them logically, if you use relevant examples, and so on. What's more, in IELTS writing task 1 and 2, the requirements are quite different, and you really need to know what they are in order to be able to meet them. IELTS writing consists of two tasks. In task 1, you need to write at least 150 words, while in task 2, it's 250 words. So task 2 is longer and it's also more important, as 66% or two-thirds of your score depends on task 2. So let's start with it. Have a look at this sample task. Some people think the government should subsidize fruit and vegetables to make healthy food more affordable, while others argue that the government should tax unhealthy food instead. Discuss both these views and give your own opinion. This is a very common type of task where you must discuss both views presented in the prompt and explain what you think should be done and why. Give reasons for your answer and include any relevant examples from your own knowledge and experience. 
This means you should develop your ideas and explain what you think and why you think so. Ideas should be logically organized and follow one from another. Write at least 250 words. Indeed, if your essay is shorter than this, you will be penalized. For band 6 and 7 students, I recommend writing between 270 and 300 words. If you're advanced, your essay may be longer than 300 words. Let me share a sample answer with you so you can see what a band 9 essay looks like. This essay has a clear structure with four paragraphs. That's exactly what you need. In the introduction, the writer presents the topic and clearly states their position, that a combination of the two views is the best way forward. The two body paragraphs discuss the opposing views and what the writer thinks about them, their upsides and downsides. To fully address the question, you must discuss both views, even if you only support one of them. The concluding paragraph summarizes the writer's position and reiterates the main arguments presented in the body paragraphs. This essay is under 300 words long. It's crucial that your essay directly answers the question at hand, as any irrelevant information that doesn't help to answer the question will result in penalties. Of course, having strong grammar and vocabulary is important. But success in IELTS writing is equally dependent on meeting task requirements and presenting a well-structured essay that is logical and easy to follow. If you haven't learned how to write academic essays in school, invest time in developing your writing skills before your exam. While task 2 is almost identical for both academic and general training students, task 1 differs a lot. General training students are required to write a letter, including all the necessary information specified in the task and avoiding any irrelevant details. Choosing the right tone is essential, as the letter may be formal when you're writing to a business, semi-formal, for example, a letter to your colleague at work, and informal, a letter to a friend. The chosen words and grammatical structures should match the intended tone of the letter. And that's something students often need to learn more about. Academic students, on the other hand, are required to write a report that describes charts, tables, maps, or diagrams. In this task, students need to analyze the data, identify the main trends or key features, and present them in their report. It's important to focus on analyzing the information and summarizing it, rather than simply describing the contents of the charts or maps. In the study plan, you'll find lessons with sample answers for task 1 and task 2. And here are the things you should learn for your IELTS writing test. Well, first of all, learn about the requirements. You can find all the requirements for each band score in IELTS band descriptors for task 1 and task 2. You can download these documents, but they can be difficult to understand in their original form. So you should watch some videos to help yourself understand what the requirements are. Next, learn how to structure your answers. You should know what examiners expect you to write in each paragraph of your answers. This can help you write faster. One of the biggest challenges in IELTS writing is completing both answers in 60 minutes and reaching the required word count. Having a structure to follow in your mind can help you write faster and meet the requirements. Next, learn about the different types of tasks in task 1 and task 2. You should learn about the types of tasks you may expect and prepare for each of them. In task 2, there are five types of questions. Advantages and disadvantages, two views and your opinion, which you've seen earlier, opinion essays or do you agree or disagree, problem solutions and two direct questions. In task 1 general training, we have 
formal, semi-formal or informal letters. In task one academic, these are tables and charts. You may find line charts, bar charts, pie charts, or a combination of them, maps and diagrams. And finally, practice, practice, and practice writing task one and task two answers. It's important to learn what's required, but it's equally important to apply this knowledge in practice to fully benefit from it. Now, let's talk about IELTS speaking. For most people, this is the second most challenging section of the IELTS test for several reasons. Examiners do use certain criteria to assess your answers similar to IELTS writing. However, in IELTS speaking, people who can speak English fluently tend to get a high score without much preparation. The problem is that if you learned English in a classroom, you most likely didn't have much experience speaking it. So speaking can be a challenge, particularly as IELTS speaking is so intense. It feels like a barrage of questions that follow one after another, sometimes before you even finish your last answer. To get through this experience successfully and achieve the best score you can get with your current skills, you should learn what to expect and what is expected from you and practice delivering it. So, what's required? I'd call IELTS speaking an informal interrogation. It's not an interview because interviews are formal and you're required to use more formal language, while in IELTS speaking you can speak informally as if you were having a chat. But we can't call IELTS speaking a conversation because you will spend between 11 and 14 minutes simply answering whatever questions come your way. So, give an open answer to each question. You may be asked about something you don't know much about or something you're not interested in at all. Whatever the question is, you should give an extended answer. Imagine this situation. Do you like art? Not really. It may be true, but there is not much English in this answer to assess. In order to give you a high score, the examiner needs to hear that you can communicate in English well. How long should your answers be? In part one, you have about 25 seconds for each answer. Let's try again. Do you like art? Not really. I've grown up in a remote village without any art galleries or museums. My school curriculum didn't include any art subjects either. So I feel like I really didn't have an opportunity to learn much about it. The candidate still doesn't like art, but this answer would get a much higher score. In part two, you'll be given a topic you need to talk about between one and two minutes. My advice is to take a timer and learn to talk until your time is up. If you manage to talk for two minutes or close to that, you'll be able to show the examiner that you can speak English fluently at length. And you have many more opportunities to show off your vocabulary and grammar. In part three, the examiner will be asking you more abstract and serious questions. Try to give longer, more extended answers of about 45 seconds each. And don't talk about yourself. Talk about people generally. Basically, in IELTS speaking, some topics are reused from time to time and some are used all the time. For example, each test begins with a topic about your work or studies, family, home or hometown. These are common topics. Some of the questions may seem particularly tricky to you, such as um, farming, art, watches, perfume or clothing. Practice answering common and difficult IELTS speaking questions. And now let's talk about the next section, IELTS listening. I think the main challenge in IELTS listening is the pace. When you take one or two questions, they're not that hard to answer. But when you get 40 questions and recordings that play one after another, 
everything changes. First of all, you've got to know how to focus your attention because you can't listen to the recording, read questions, and write down your answers at the same time. If you simply follow the instructions, you'll spend a lot of time listening to those instructions and not that much time reading the questions that are coming next. So learn the test format. You should know what the instructions are and how much time you're given and where, so you can spend this time usefully, mainly reading your questions. And you should also learn strategies for different types of tasks. There are just four of them in IELTS listening. 50% of your score depends on filling the blanks questions. Even if you find them easier than others, it's worth learning more about them just because they give you half of your points. Then you always get multiple choice tasks, which most people find pretty hard. And either a map, another of students' favorites or shall I say, nightmares, and matching information. Basically, you should learn more about each of them and prepare. There are also some general strategies and tips for IELTS listening. For example, highlight the keywords to concentrate on what you're looking for. Cross out incorrect options. Never leave any questions unanswered because marks for incorrect answers are not deducted and there is always a chance to guess correctly, especially if you've already crossed out some of the answers that are definitely incorrect. I have separate videos with um, overall strategies and strategies for each type of task with practice, which are all linked in the study plan. IELTS listening is the section where candidates typically get the highest scores. But of course, for some purposes, candidates require an eight in listening, which requires more preparation. So what about IELTS reading? When it comes to IELTS reading, your score depends on two factors, your reading speed in English and your vocabulary. Unless you're really advanced, it's unlikely that you'll be able to understand everything you read, especially given the volume of text you need to cover to answer the 40 questions. With only 60 minutes to complete the test, it's crucial to manage your time effectively. One of the techniques that can save you the most time is learning which questions come in order and which don't. Basically, for a lot of questions, you can read the question, then start reading the text, looking for the answer, get it, then read the next question, and so on. Then you don't need to understand, or even worse, memorize everything in the passage. You just need to concentrate on the one thing you're looking for. Unfortunately, in IELTS reading, there are over 10 question types. Learn what they are and which of them come in order and which don't. Some questions are also more difficult than others. The usual suspects are true, false, not given, and matching headings. Learn more about challenging types of questions and practice. Next, analyze your test results and find your mistakes in order to understand where you went wrong and how you should answer next time. And remember that questions get more difficult as you progress through the test. So it's important to manage your time wisely. Try to spend about 15 minutes on the first section, 20 on the second and 25 on the third and see if it works for you. Find out how much time you can spend on each section to get to your best results and manage your time carefully during the real test. The time you need to prepare for the test varies greatly depending on your current level of English and the required score. Some people can pass it in a week, while others may require several months of preparation to get the best shot at passing it. With our free IELTS study plan, you get a step-by-step -step preparation plan with links to relevant lessons to learn more about each step. And you can download this plan right here and in the video description box below. 
Thank you so much for watching me today. Good luck with your preparation and your exam. Bye.